Hey everyone, how's it going? Cloud here, and welcome to my guide on the Slug Menace quest. Now, for this quest you need the following requirements, so you must complete these quests, uh, Sea Slug and the Wanted quest. And you also need the following skills, uh, level 30 crafting, level 30 rune crafting, level 30 slayer, level 30 thieving, and the ability to defeat a level 51 enemy with melee. That's it for the requirements, now onto the items. You need the uh, following items, uh, Swamp Paste, uh, Com Orb, um, which you had from the Wanted quest. I'll talk about that one a bit further on during the guide. Uh, you will need at least five uh, Rune Essence or Pure Essence. However, the Essence can break during the quest, so to be safe, I um, bring 10 to 15 or a Wicked Hood, which can provide you with a certain amount of Rune or Pure Essence. You're also going to need to have access to the following um, runecrafting altars, earth, water, fire, air and mind. So you're going to either need the, those equivalent um, talismans, tiaras, or again, if you have a wicked hood and you've already given it a uh, talisman or tiara from the mentioned altars, you can access them altars with the wicked hood in your inventory. And also you obviously just need some uh, armor, weapon and food to defeat the level 51 slug prince, which you'll need to use melee for. So that's it for the requirements and items, now onto the quest starting point. So we're currently at the Falador Lodestone which you can get access via the Lodestone network. If you don't have this one unlocked and wish to unlock the other ones as well, I have a guide which can be found in the description below. Um, but from here the quest starting point is the same as the Wanted and Sea Slug quest which is by speaking to Satifi Kashin who can be found in Falador Park. So if you just watch where I'm going I will take you to where um, Satifi Kashin is located. So once you reach Falador Park, speak uh, with Sir Tiffy Kashin and inquire about any jobs that he might have. Uh, along with his ramblings, he'll tell you about the village of Witchhaven, which has had some rather strange going on recently. He tells you that since you've been instated into the Temple Knights, you're eligible for a new mission. He tells you to check in with the Temple Knights local agent, uh, Colonel Jake O'Neill, with the password, In Falador, the geese fly backwards on Tuesday. Sir Tiffy will also upgrade your Com Orb to a Com Orb version 2, if you didn't have the Com Orb with you he'll just give you a replacement one anyway. Um, so we now need to head to Witchhaven. Now uh, the easiest way to get to Witchhaven via the Lodestone network will be going to the Ardone Lodestone. So head in that direction now. Once you're at the Ardone Lodestone you want to head to Witchhaven which is directly located southeast of your current location. So you need to pass through Ardone and then uh, on the eastern side of Ardone you will then enter Witchhaven. So just watch where I'm going and I'll show you where we're heading. So once you're in Witchhaven, you need to find Colonel Jake O'Neill rocking in a chair on the dock, which is in the northeast corner of the town. So you want to head over there, and talking to the retired member of the Temple Knights reveals that some of the villagers have started acting strangely since about three weeks, especially Mayor Eustace Hobb. He also tells you that some of them are dazed and in a confused state. If you have not already, ask O'Neill who the important people are in Witchhaven, and he points you to Mayor Hobb, Brother Maledict, and Holgart the Fisherman, who helps you during the sea slug quest. O'Neill also suggests that the others may have some insight into what has been happening to their fellow mates. So just a note, you must make sure you um, finish talking to O'Neill about who to speak to or they won't give you the right dialogue when you go speak to them. So first off, we're going to speak to Mayor Hobb at his house, which is on the west side of town. Um, once you reach him and speak to him, Mayor Hobb will tell you various things, one which is about a certain shrine dedicated to Sarah Domin. As you start to leave the house, Savant will stop you, as she notes that the Mayor is acting a bit fishy and asks you to scan him. So inside the Mayor's house, choose the scan option on the Com Orb version 2, um, and she gets an odd reading, two life forms from the Mayor, but she is unsure what it means. So, next we need to head to the church, which is just southeast of the mayor, and you want to speak with Brother Maledix. He'll tell you that he's worried about his flock, who has begun to act a little bit strangely lately, emulating what uh, O'Neill had told you. Um, now, walk a little bit north by the shore, and you'll see Holgar, which is uh, who we spoke to during the sea slug quest, and he tells you that the mayor recently confiscated his boat and gave it to another man named Jeb. He also mentions that the fishing platform looks a mighty bit stranger, and that you, sh you should go take a look. 
So we need now to report back to Colonel Jake O'Neill and tell him what we've found so far. Um, so when you speak to him, he'll suggest you take a good look at the shrine. Um, now, to find the shrine, you need to head to the western edge of the village uh, towards where these ruins are, and you should be able to climb down the old entrance to get into the Witch Haven dungeon, which houses the shrine. Uh, once you're in the dungeon, look to the minimap, and on the east wall, look for a red section indicating a false wall. If you choose the push wall option to open this section uh, and then enter the wall opening, you'll find yourself in a winding tunnel with aggressive giant lobsters that have been possessed by sea slugs. You want to make your way through the tunnel, or to save some time, um, you can climb through the agility shortcut, which requires level 30 agility, and you want to head to the imposing doors blocking your way. Uh, don't try and open the doors just yet, otherwise a flash of light will spring from them and will give you um, some damage. What you need to do is Savant will contact you via the com orb and ask you to take a scan of the strange markings on the door. Choose the scan option and she'll say they look similar to some of the Saradomian clips she uh, studied in the academy and she gives you a transcript of the runes to take to Joral who can translate them. Before you go you want to grab the dead sea, uh, sea slug nearby as it will come in handy later. Savant contacts you about the slug you picked up and does a scan to analyse it. So we need to go find Jorah who is located at the outpost, now the quickest way to get there is to go to the Eagle's Peak Lodestone via the Lodestone network. Once you arrive there you want to keep heading in the southern-ish direction and eventually you'll reach the outpost which is northwest of West Sardone and south of the Tree Gnome Stronghold. Uh, once you arrive at the outpost, you want to talk to Joel and talk to him about the translations. Uh, Savant pops up in the com orb and coaches you on how to get Joel to translate the message. Eventually, Joel takes a look at the text and says it refers to a great battle between the Temple of Saradomen and an evil creature called Maish Medron, or as she is most commonly called, the Mother Malum. After Joel is done, Savant contacts you again to catch up on what she has learned about Mother Malum, and you want to then head back to uh, Witchhaven again, um, so by going to the Ardo Lodestone network and then head into Witch Haven like you did near the beginning and I'll speak to you once you're there. So once you return to Witch Haven you want to go speak to uh, the Captain O'Neill again on the dock and when you speak to him he'll suggest you speak with Brother Maledict to see if he knows anything about Malum. So, you want to approach the church's door and you see a brief cutscene of the mayor leaving the chapel. When you enter the church, the priest is wobbling around looking rather ill and acting strangely. Talk to him about what is behind the imposing doors and you find that, um, sorry, you find he tells you he has a book that has information on how to keep Mother Malum trapped, but someone has stolen three pages uh, to the shrine's history and you must recover them immediately. So, for the first page, you need to enter the mayor's house and search uh, his study desk to obtain the first page of the holy book. Uh, you then want to talk to Ezekiel Lovecraft, who is the owner of Lovecraft's Tackle Fishing Shop, which is south of the dock, uh, and you need to uh, talk to him to get the second page of the holy book. And to recover the last page, you want to talk to O'Neill again. He too has the same look as the other villagers. He strangely does not have the last page, which unfortunately has been ripped into pieces. So you want to try and use the swamp paste on the fragments to glue the page back together, but Savant stops you. The oily tar would ruin the ancient parchment, she warns. Instead, she advises to make sticky glue from a rendered slug, and she mentions that it can be done by someone who is renowned in seafood cooking. So what we need to do is travel to the fishing platform. Uh, you can do that by talking to Jeb, who is next to Holgar, the man we spoke to earlier. And when you arrive on the fishing platform, you want to talk to Bailey in the small room on the southwest corner of the platform. You want to hand in the dead slug you picked up early from the shrine, and in a few seconds he gives you sea slug glue you need. And finally, use the glue on the fragments and the puzzle will pop up. So this bit is basically like a jigsaw puzzle. You need to move the three pieces of the page around using the controls over in the bottom right corner of your screen. You can use the arrows to move, rotate and even flip over fragments. And you need to use the show and select buttons to choose which pieces to show and move each time. Now the easiest way to tell if you've got them all on the right side or not is that the correct side is lighter than the other. Um, what I'll do, I'll have the image paused uh, on the screen of what it needs to look like so then you can then move the pieces around until you get it into the correct order. 
So once you've got it on the same as what um, is on my screen and you've put the pieces in their correct place, the puzzle fragments will close automatically forming the last page. Uh, you now want to talk to Jeb on the dock and have him take you back to Witchhaven. So, this next bit, we need to create the um, blank different runes that I spoke about using the pages we now have. Now, if you right click, you can choose a shape option from the three pages to create a blank rune. Um, it is possible to fail shaping an essence and break it, um, and also it can break when you actually imbue it onto the rune crafting altar, um, which is why I said it would be handy to either bring spare rune essence or pure essence with you, or the wicked hood, which gives you a lot of rune essence uh, for each day. So you want to right click and get page 1 to turn uh, a shape into a blank earth rune and a blank air rune. You want to right click page 2 to construct a blank fire rune and a blank water rune. And page 3 to construct a blank mind rune. Uh, like I said you can break um, each of those um, at different times so just um, keep repeating it until you get the um, correct versions. And obviously if you need to acquire more rune or pure essence you can do so by whatever means is easiest for you. So once you've created all of the blank runes, we now need to take them to their associated altars uh, and use it on them. Uh, like I said, it is possible to break them when you imbue them, so it might be worthwhile bringing some spare essence along with you, just in case you have to reconstruct a certain one. So you need to take uh, obviously the blank earth rune to the earth altar, the blank air rune to the air altar, the blank fire rune to the fire altar, the blank water rune to the water altar, and the blank mind rune to the mind altar. Um, I will tell you what's the easiest way to go and obtain these all in terms of where the altars are actually located, and then you can do this in any order you want. So, the blank earth altar, I this will depend if you have the wicked hood or not. Now, if you have the wicked hood and you have the earth um, talisman imbued into it, I would advise teleporting to this altar, only because it's um, not very close to any other teleport locations. It will then take you directly to the earth altar, which is located just near the sawmill, the lumberyard. Now, if you can't do that uh, and need to walk, I would teleport to the Varrock Lodestone and then keep heading in the northeast direction until you reach that altar. Now, the air altar is located in between um, the Barbarian Village and Varrock. Now, the quickest way to get there, really, is to go to the Varrock Lodestone and then go northwest past Gertrude Towers. And just as you get near the Barbarian uh, Village Bridge, the altar is there to access. Again, you can choose to teleport to this altar if you wish, but you only get two teleports per day. And I would personally save the teleport for another altar, which I'll speak about in a moment. Um, the fire altar is located just outside of the dueling arena. So you can either teleport to the Alcarid Lodestone and head there. Um, or again, if you've got a ring of dueling, you can teleport to the dual arena um, directly inside there go outside and then you should see the fire altar there. The water altar is located in the Lumbridge Swamp. Now the quicker way for that one is to teleport to the Lumbridge Lodestone and then just keep heading through the swamp until you reach there. Um, or alternatively you can go to the Drainer Village Lodestone and go that way as well. It's about the same distance either way. Um, and then finally the Mind Altar. Now this one's a little bit more of a pain to reach which is why I recommend saving your second teleport for this one. Uh, the Mind Altar is located just north for Falador near where the Ice Mountain is and the Dwarven Mountain. Um, it's pretty much just on the border of the wilderness so it's a bit of a pain to get to this one so like I said if you have got two teleports available for you in your Wicked Hood I'd save it for the Earth Altar and the Mind Altar and then make your own way to the other ones. But like I said you want to take each uh, blank rune and imbue it on its relevant altar. You could, you can possibly break them if that happens just reconstruct the specified uh, rune you need and then try and imbue it again. So once you're complete, your inventory should contain special misshapen counterparts of the elemental runes. So, once you've got all of those together, uh, you want to bring your five runes you've created along with your com orb and the melee equipment and food and armor to defeat the level 51 that I mentioned. And we now need to head back to the shrine, um, which we um, which was located near Witchhaven. So if you teleport to the Ardone Lodestone and head to the Witchhaven dungeon entrance, I'll speak to you again in a moment. So when ready, you want to go back uh, to the shrine, which you can do by going down the trapdoor, go through the false wall that I told you about earlier, and then follow the shrine all the way around until you reach the imposing doors. You then want to use each of the specially shaped runes you made um, on the doors, which will trigger a cutscene. You can see that Mayor Hobbes tricked you into opening the door so that Mother Malam could escape. 
Following the cutscene, you must now fight the level 51 Slug Prince, um, who is pretty easy to be honest. You can only fight him with melee, but you pretty much kick his ass with melee anyway. <laughs> um, so it shouldn't take long to kill the prince. After you kill the prince, however, you'll see another cutscene with Mother Malum. She threatens to make you her new host, but Savant pops in with the via uh, the com orb and teleports you safely to Falador Park um, before Mother Malum can take control of you. And he then wants to talk to Certificashin, who's nearby, to finish the quest. So, once you've finished speaking to him, it will come up, Congratulations, you completed the Slug Menace quest. You're awarded one quest point, 3,500 experience in crafting, rune crafting and thieving, uh, two treasure under keys, two hearts of ice, and promotion to proselyte among the Temple Knights. This means you can buy and wear new Temple Knight armour with a greater defence bonus than initiate, um, and also gives you more prayer bonus, I believe, as well. And you can buy each piece individually, or the armour pack from Certific Ashin, or you can buy it from the Grand Exchange as well. So overall, not really a difficult quest, a lot of running around, um, the, only, the only really annoying bit of this quest is when you're constructing the um, special runes, as it is quite possible to break them, especially if you've only got a minimum sort of crafting and rune crafting level, um, the higher you've got, the less likely you are to break them. Um, but the boss isn't exactly difficult, and the reward is pretty good in terms of the experience, but also the proselyte armour is very handy, so if you're one of these um, players who like to fight monsters by using a lot of prayer to support you, this is the best best sort of armour to be using as it gives you quite a good defence as well as a massive prayer uh, boost as well. Um, and also this quest is um, to unlock the sequel quest uh, part of the slug uh, quest series. Uh, but yeah, I don't think you'll run into any problems following my guide, however if you do get stuck at all, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you out as best I can. If not, thank you for watching, please make sure you like, favourite, comment, subscribe and don't forget to share with your friends. Cheers guys, bye bye.